What's up everybody? This is meant to be a quick tutorial to explain how to use Lithophane Maker Desktop to make chromophanes. Now you can also make a lot of other things with Lithophane Maker Desktop, but I'm just going to focus on chromophanes in this video. You see up here we have flat lithophanes, like a light box, night light, all these things you can rotate around, you can save settings when you make them, you can uh, do all sorts of things, but I'm just going to focus on chromophanes. Right now, the only chromophane that I have available is a layer swap chromophane. In the future, there will be other options. So for a layer swap chromophane, the first thing you'll probably notice are all of these colors over here. This is the filament library, and you can see these colors. Uh, they're defined in the color RGB column right here. Um, the transmission distance tells you how transmissive they are, so a larger number means it's more transmissive. Uh, you can see that arctic white, for example, is more transmissive than true white, and black is not very transmissive at all, right? And then over here on the right side is the chromophane design section. So this picture right here um, is just a a nice picture that tell you to click this square to open the picture you want. So I'll, I'll click on that. And here you can see I've selected a nativity scene as the picture that I want to use. Um, the nativity scene picture has a transmissive background and because of that this chromophane will be a circle. So you can get any shape chromophane that you want. In order to figure out what colors to use, you can just eyeball it and say, I see kind of some purples, some greens, some blues, some gold, um, and add those in. You can also right click and find the closest color in the favorite section of the library or overall for all of the items in the library. So I'm gonna click on find closest color to that one and it says it's gray, so closest color to this one right here would be the deep blue. Closest color to say this green area right here is dark green. And so this will help you find the colors that you want um, to make this image exactly how you want it to be. But maybe you don't want these colors. If that's the case you can click this button and it'll slowly rotate around the color wheel so you can see a bunch of different colors. You can click on the button again right there to make it stop. You can drag this around and see all of the colors that are an option. And if you don't like any of them, you just hit the reset button and go back to the original colors. Likewise, there's this chromatic sundering wheel, which is similar. You can make it shift the colors in a different way than just moving them around the color wheel. This one's a little bit more extreme or it can give you sort of wilder color combinations. Um, so together you can make pretty much any color scheme that you want with both of these buttons. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start adding some colors, uh, some filaments to this. Um, the first one that you add, the one that will be on on the left side of, of the panel of colors, will be your bottom color. And then let's say that the next color I want is deep blue. That would be the next color. And you can see right here the expected image has popped up. So this is what it's expected uh, that you, you will get with your chromophane once it's printed, right? Um, so we also have some greens in here. I'm going to go with the emerald green by American Filament because I like that color. And then purple, because I see some purple. And then I like to put white on top. So generally what I like to do is have black on bottom and then the colors that have hues to them in the middle and then white on top. And what black is doing is it's just giving you the ability to make the deep blue darker because you can have black on bottom and then have a thin layer of deep blue and you get a darker deep blue. If we were to swap this around, then we'd be able to shade yellow, or sorry, green, so you would have the ability to get multiple shades of green. 
if we were to put purple over here, then you could get multiple shades of purple. You can see I'm clicking these arrow buttons. That's how you move the filament around and adjust which layer it's on. Okay, so this number down here, this gives the maximum thickness of the black sheet of material. So the black sheet right now is um, up to 0.2 millimeters and the program will figure out exactly how thick it should be in, in different places. So if we were to make this five millimeters, um, that's kind of what I like to do with the bottom sheet because then we get some thickness there, some meat, so that the chromophane is stiff and it um, is heavier. It feels nicer that way. So I usually make that five and black is not very transmissive, so it'll just be straight up black. Um, but for this one, if, for example, we were to make that 0.3 millimeters thick, then we could have a little bit fuller green that, that is closer to exactly this color. Although in practice, if it's, if you're getting this, then you'll pretty much have that full green color just, just by the default. So normally I don't even adjust any of these numbers except for the bottom layer, which I make thick. So when I'm editing the image, I normally have the color pixel resolution fairly high. And the reason for that is it goes faster. I can, I can use the program faster like that. But when I make the final lithophane, I usually like it to be something like 0.2. And then you can see that the resolution here got a whole lot better. And then the chromophane width is the width of the chromophane, you know, from, from side to side for the image. And now the layer height, this is important. The layer height you need to set to whatever you want to print it with. So if you have a smaller layer height, let's say 0.8 millimeters, then you have more increments of color. You have more color options. So the smaller your layer height, say even 0.04, you you get more shades of color. Uh, there are more shades available. However, you know, practically speaking, you're going to have a much harder time printing at 0 0.04. As you can see, going from 0 0.04 to 0 0.1, if you watch this up here, watch it change. It's not a big difference. So generally, I like to keep it at 0 0.1 because it's easy to print with. I don't want to have under extrusion and this is just what I prefer, but that's how you use it. Now, I actually don't like the way that this looks right now, so I'm going to also add in um, honey gold because that'll give us this gold tone that I do like. Oh, and and here's where the magic happens. You switch the colors around, and you can see how it looks when you have different colors at different layers. That's where you get most of the improvement. All right, so now we also have several color matching algorithms. These are just different ways for the program to figure out which color that is available best matches each of these pixels over here. Hubble and Newton are the two best. And then Ptolemy can start to get a little weird and, and Euclid can get a little weird, but sometimes they look really good. Like that looks pretty good. I mean, I actually like Euclid better here, I think, than, than the other options. So you can play around with that and it'll match the colors using different criteria because, you know, the human eye sees things a little bit differently than the colors are quantified in a color system. So it's hard to make the computer figure out what looks like it matches. So then after you have done all of that, you simply hit the save STL button and it'll create a folder with your settings and the STL that you created. So this is what you get in the folder. You get a settings file that contains all of the settings you use to make the chromophane. And you can load those settings back in if you wanna do it again. You get the STL file, which you put into your slicer, and then you get a printing instructions and settings text file. So here's what you get inside of the printing instructions and settings text file. It simply tells you the filament order and the swap heights. 
So you can see that the first filament, which is on the bottom, is going to be listed first here. And then the last filament, which is on the top, is listed at the very end. So you can see it goes midnight black, like you'd expect, to emerald green, like you see there, deep blue, like you see there, purple, um, honey gold, and then arctic white. So you know which order to put the filament into the machine in. And then here it tells you the swap heights. So at each one of these layer heights, you need to put a pause in your slicer or tell it to swap filament at that layer height in order to get this chromophane image that you see here. So let me show you how that would work. So I have pulled the chromophane into my slicer here and I have my chromophane settings up. Now the a main thing, a very important thing to make sure is true here is that you have the layer height the same as what you put in the chromophane design tool. If you do not have the same layer height, then you won't be able to swap colors at the same places and the colors may not blend together the way that you intended them to because my program is assuming that you have increments of thickness of the colors that match what you put into the program. Another thing that is important is to make sure that the top has at least a millimeter of thickness to it because that way you can blend two colors. You don't need to make it completely solid. You can save a little material if you don't. These, for their size, can take some time to make. So anything you can do to save a little time and filament is always nice. Something I like to do with mine sometimes, if I'm going to make them an ornament or something that hangs on the wall, then I will add a negative part in there. I'll add a cylinder, three and a half millimeters or more in the diameter. And then, of course, the, the height just needs to be enough to penetrate through the entire chromophane. And I try to line it right up in the center. And I make sure that I have enough meat above it so that it doesn't break, it doesn't get ripped out wherever it's hanging. Another thing I like to do is add a height range modifier. Because I have all this extra thickness down here that isn't actually contributing anything to the appearance of the chromophane, it can be printed at a much you know, thicker layer height. So here I would just use a multiple of my layer height to make sure that I can later pause at the exact right height that I need to. So since my layer height is generally 0.1, this could be 0.2 and that'll cut the print time about in half, right? I need to change that over here as well. Okay, it's good in both places. I also need to change this to I'll say 4.6 millimeters so that it goes all the way through that extra base that we put in there to make that whole part of the chromophane print quickly. So now we can slice the chromophane and we just need to add the pauses in. My top swap, which you can't see, it's, it's in the settings file, which is off of the shared screen, but you can imagine it's at 6.5. Then we have a swap at 6.1. Then we have a swap at 5.7, then we have a swap at 5.3, then we have a swap at 5.1. Now after this, you just do the regular print thing. And what I like to do to make sure that I don't mess up the filament order is I stack the rolls of filament so that the last color to be used is on the bottom. And then the, the color before that is you know just above that, so on and so forth. That way, as you're swapping out the rolls, the next roll that you need to put on is the one that's on top of the stack. And it just makes it a little bit easier to do it all correctly and to not make any mistakes. So that describes the whole process. And I think that people who are used to 3D printing things could take it from here with no problem. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy. Bye-bye.